Well, 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 we're back at it. I am, I'm Jonathan Allen Wright. For those of you who may not know me, I am the music guy for Honest You Pastor. And so I am going live today. We do a once a month live stream with uh, usually an artist that we know or that has, you know, communicated with us, maybe that we've playlisted or something like that. And so today we will be going live with a, a good buddy of mine now, Randy James. And so we'll wait for him to hop in. But if you have any questions about music, maybe you can send them, uh, send them my way. But yeah, also uh, give you some updates on the whole like create stream that we started. Now it is uh, available in podcast format. It's available on Apple, Spotify, all of that good stuff. You can look up Create Stream, and if you missed the live stream, you can go to either the Honest Youth Pastor YouTube channel and watch it that way, or you can go and look at it uh, on the podcast stuff. And so it's a, it's a good it's a good time. Uh, someone asked, so do you all have WhatsApp? We d we don't have WhatsApp. I don't think Michael might. Maybe I don't know. I don't I don't speak for Michael. Maybe I do sometimes, but. Also, I see someone, they said, can you please, please pray for my dad? He has COVID pneumonia and he's on an, okay, yeah, absolutely. Praying for your dad, absolutely. All right. Well, let's see here. We've got Randy in now. Let's see what we have to say. All right. Let's see. Did we get Randy in here? Yeah, there he is. <laughs> What's going on? What's up, buddy? It's good to see you. Good to see you, man. I was I was kind of letting people know this is you know you're you're a friend now and so this is just going to be a good time I can already tell we're going to have we're going to have fun. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm looking forward to it, dude. It's it's been uh, it's honestly been one of the highlights. Uh, releasing music is is our friendship that's that's been it's just it's just been fun to watch. <laughs> dude, it it really has. Like I I think it's I guess we kind of go into that first. Uh, you know, I met you through this page because of the playlists and everything like that like people i don't know if they are aware but you can message us songs if you want to try to get on the playlist and stuff and randy he messaged he messaged us and you know he and i just kind of hit it off i don't know we just got along and so we ended up you know texting and talking on the phone some and now we send demos relentlessly to each other so <laughs> <laughs> relentless demos <laughs> yeah relentless demos back forth but yeah you're so randy james if you're not familiar he is uh he's got some stuff that's just his but he's also in hopeful band if you want to look them up on spotify y'all just released an amazing song enough like a couple of weeks ago right how long has that been out oh it's been it's actually time flies man it's been like five or six weeks already i think it man let me think when it came out yeah it came out october 1st so yeah, wow. going on, yeah, going on two months, I guess. I feel like that's always like a weird thing. Like I, I always feel like I'm introducing like, hey, this is a new song. And then I look and it's been two months and I'm like, is this a new song anymore? I don't know if yeah. it counts. The, at the, but, at the, rate of, the rate that information travels nowadays, I think, uh, you know, you're lucky if it's if it's new for two weeks. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's ex <laughs> so, Randy, you're out all the way in beautiful San Diego, correct? Yes, sir. Look at that. Is the weather nice today or is it just blazing hot? What's it like out there? No, it's, it's, it, this is like the perfect time of the year because the weather's like, I want to say high 60s. Um, Excellent. And, and it's sunny outside. So that's that's our fall. Our fall is like 68 to 70 with you know blue skies. Dude, our, our fall here in the Virginia, North Carolina range, because I, I live in North Carolina, but I'm in Virginia all the time. It is... It is so, uh, I don't know, it's unpredictable. Like one morning you'll wake up, like last week I woke up and it was 21 degrees at my house. And then like literally three days later, I woke up and it was 70 degrees at my house. So <laughs> it's, it's all over the map. But so you didn't, you didn't always live in San Diego. You lived in Hawaii, correct? You were born in Hawaii? Yeah, I was born, I was born on the big island of Hawaii. And I still have a ton of family over there. And uh, yeah, my mom, uh, my mom remarried when I was really young. And so I moved away when I was about four or five. And, um, you know, I always went back, I always had family over there. I went back and lived for for a couple years um, here and there. 
Uh, but for the most part, I grew up, I grew up here in San Diego because I've been here, I've been here consistently since I was about 10. Um, I did live in Salt Lake City for like three years. But yeah, most, most, most of my, most of my time was, uh, was here in San Diego. Cool. Look at that. So now you moved when you were really young and I, I always tell people kind of as we go into this, you know, we're like a youth ministry based page. So I, I always have to get to know what people's youth group or just teen experience with the Lord is. So yeah. you moved when you were really young. Now, what was like, I guess your involvement with the church as a kid into your teen years and stuff, what, what did that entail? Yeah. So it's actually, I have really fond memories of youth group. I, um, I uh, was introduced to church pretty early because my mom, uh, my mom and dad, or my stepdad, um, they were um, devout Christian, and you know we're pretty consistent with taking us to church and whatnot. So I got I got uh, I got tied into the youth group probably from ju about junior high age. Um, that's 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 about the the farthest back I can remember being involved in church, um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I just, I fell in love with it. I made, I made, you know, amazing friends. We went on, we went on amazing trips and, um, that was where, it was where I was really, that was where I started to really, uh, build a curiosity for God and, and knowing how there's something more to life than, than just, you know, playing video games and, you know, egging people's cars and stuff like that. <laughs> I was, I was, I was a little bit of a reckless kid. Um, but you know, I was, it wasn't until I was about 17, um, that I really made like a, a firm commitment with Christ that, um, you know, that, that, uh, that my life had to change for real. You know, it was, it was, it wasn't just going through the motions anymore. It was like, no, this is, this is real. And so I remember, yeah, I was 17, but I, I still had really amazing experiences, uh, in youth growing up. Um, we had, I had awesome youth leaders. Um, I, uh, I had a junior high pastor named Tim and he was, he was like the coolest dude, loved star Wars. Like, um, you know, <laughs> like every youth nice. pastor <laughs> <laughs> loved star Wars, had awesome game nights, like did a really good job of like, of bringing fun into church. Um, but still keeping like the focus on Jesus. Yeah. Um, and then high school, I, I had a, a youth pastor named Howie Smith and, um, yeah, I Dude, just Howie is there. such a like solid youth pastor name. Are you kidding me? Howie's great. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was, he was awesome, man. I mean, and that was, it was those, it was those two youth pastors that really introduced me to Christian music in general. I remember uh, in junior high, like Switchfoot was just getting big. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to date myself, but, uh, and Reliant K, I was like super into Reliant K <laughs> yes. third day. Um, so it was, it was literally like Switchfoot, Reliant K, Third Day. I think were like the three bands that I, like, they were like my, my go-to band. Oh, and Jars of Clay. Of course, Jars Ooh. of Clay. Yeah. And I still, love, I still love all their music. All those guys are still so good. <laughs> so the other, literally the other morning, I, I sometimes will throw on like one of my Spotify daily mixes. And I saw one that was saying, hey, we've got like Switchfoot, Reliant K, all of these guys in there. And the first song that came on was uh, Meant to Live by Switchfoot. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, are you kidding me? I've literally listened to this like maybe five days ago. This isn't random. Like I'm, it's, yeah. I'm constantly revisiting some of these bands that I just kind of like grew up listening to. Reliant K, yeah. Switchfoot. I listened to a lot of DC talk. Do you, do you remember? Okay. Do you remember audio adrenaline? Yes. Yeah. Man. I used to, I used to listen to audio adrenaline. And I remember, uh, since we're talking about the youth days, I remember the first time I ever felt God, felt God's presence in music was, um, we were at a youth conference in LA and it was, uh, mercy me was, uh, was leading the conference and they were, they had just barely come out with, I can only imagine. And like, it was still, it was still, uh, really fresh and new yeah and i remember that was the, that was the first song that i ever heard um where i actually was moved to tears and I, I i really like i really thought about the the lyrics and wow like wow how amazing is it going to be like when we meet god face to face you know yeah and um yeah it was it was very moving I, i'll never forget that day it was it was really powerful so like how like how old were you when you said that that happened when you kind of first realized yeah, that, man I must, I've moved I must have been like 
I must have been like 13 or 14. Dang. Um, so I was pretty young. 13 and 14, were you already playing music? Like, I know you pretty well at this point, Randy, but like, I haven't asked you some of these like deeper questions like this. So, yeah, were you no, doing actually, music? Okay. It's really funny. So, I was totally an outsider to music. I loved music. I enjoyed it, but um, like I didn't, I didn't play it, um, and I didn't even start exploring with it until until I went to Brazil, which I'll, I'll tell you that after. But um, when I was when I was seventeen, when I made that commitment with Jesus, like that real commitment, where you know where it wasn't just like you know back and forth, yeah. um, and you know, funny enough, uh, my my biological dad big musician so we have music all in the family my grandfather um my grandfather uh was uh he played at woodstock he was on main stage yeah. his band his band was the like the poster band for woodstock so they uh you know they're really well known his band called canned heat and he played the bass um but he also played with the monkeys he played with uh jerry lee lewis uh he, he was uh what's tom waits bassist played with er uh, eric clapton and john mayall and uh, what the heck, man? This is Keith, unreal. Like, Keith, I, have me picture, I have a Keith, yeah, I have a picture of him and Keith Richards and um, and uh, Tom Waits. Oh and um, yeah, so it was it was crazy because I wasn't, but I wasn't raised around that. Like I, yeah. I like I, you know, I had contact with my dad for sure, uh, but I, I, uh, you know, I I only heard stories, you know, and I I got to I got to see my grandpa a couple times. Um, you know, I got to ride in a limo with him in Hawaii. You know, just him and I in the back of my dad was chauffeuring us around. And, um, you know, so that was pretty cool. So I had a, a few memories, but I would say, I, you know, I, I didn't really get a chance to play because I, I didn't have a consistent relationship with my dad. And, um, you know, he, he, uh, he just wasn't around. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't really able to, to break through to that, that yeah. you know, music, but I always had it in me. Like I always imagined like every time I would, I would hear someone you know, write or sing or do something that was just, you know, really powerful. Like I, I just felt it inside me. Like I want to do that someday. Like I just have to, I have to do that someday, but I didn't know where to start. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it wasn't until, it wasn't until I, I moved to Brazil when I was 17. Um, and I, I went to, uh, I went to a church down there. Um, and, uh, that's where I met my wife who, uh, we are now together, been together 17 years. So you can do the math. Woo um yeah <laughs> and uh she was on the worship band and she was really good she's still good um played acoustic <laughs> guitar and um and uh yeah and then i remember i remember uh i had just started picking up a guitar right around that time and started writing started writing love songs for her they were they were so cheesy but um all <laughs> and I you're gonna say, play three of I, them today I got, no. I got the girl though i got the girl you <laughs> yeah. know yeah. so yeah um yeah and and it was the other another funny like uh irony i guess with music is um in in youth group one of my best friends who i have zero contact con contact with now unfortunately but one of my best friends in in high school was uh went on went on to start the band called augustana and they did uh they did a uh, famous song called Boston. They were like, it was a big hit back in the early 2000s. And, Look at um, the, so you were just like surrounded by music this whole time, but oh, you yeah, didn't I really live, like take that lived, interest in it until later. I live like 10 minutes away from John Foreman and all these, <laughs> yeah. you know, all these amazing, amazing artists. I had a lot of influences growing up and, um, you know, John Foreman being one of my favorites. Um, yeah, man. In the Christian music space, but yeah, I didn't really start dabbling until I was 17, but you know, I to be completely honest with you. I'm, I didn't even start playing in a band until about two years ago. So, um, and that was, uh, the church had a need and, you know, I could play guitar and I could sing, but you know, playing in a band is a completely different thing. Leading worship is a completely different thing. Yeah. And I, I had, re I resisted it for a while. My pastor, um, where I lead now, I run, I run the worship program with my wife and sister. Um, my pastor kept, uh, you know, dripping on me. We're, we're a church startup and he, he saw potential and, and uh, you know, was like, hey, you should go up there. And I, I resisted for like a year because I was like, hey, I don't think I'm ready. I don't know if I'm spiritual enough. And, you know, of course I love the Lord. And, um, but I just had this, this image that I had to be perfect, you know, before I could get up on mm. stage and, um, you know, and there was there was some work that God had to do in my heart before 
before the opportunity opened up. Um, but yeah, we, when we, I started doing that just a couple of years ago and, and that has really, I would say taken my, uh, my playing to, to the level to where, okay, I could start recording, you know? Um, and finally I'm starting to, to be able to formulate some ideas better to where I feel comfortable and confident enough to, to start writing and releasing, but I'm still at the very, I would say very beginning of the, of the, of the starting line, you know, I've still got a lot to learn. And, but yeah. Well, I mean, so first of all, I mean, obviously I've listened to your music a lot because you're my friend and also because you sent it to me a little bit early. I won't tell anybody, don't worry. And so I, I hear it and, and you're great at writing. So like, how did you end up, you know, you said you started by, writing love songs for your wife obviously and honestly i did too that's that's how it always starts you know you're like how am i gonna impress this person i've got to do something <laughs> impressive you know and uh for me it was face planning off my long board and then trying to write a song later so it's like a mix of, of failure so uh how did you end up i guess when did you gravitate towards like man i'm gonna try to write some worship music or i'm gonna write some music about god Can you hear me? Yeah, man. Say that again. When did I gravitate? Sorry, cut out. Oh, yeah, no, you're good. So when did you like gravitate towards writing worship music? Like when did you start kind of feeling, hey, I think I'm going to try to write a song like that? Okay, so, man, I would say over the over the years. So um, probably when, probably my 20s is when I started really trying to, to write um, more seriously. Uh, and so I would, I would just dabble a lot and I didn't have a lot of experience even playing guitar. So I'm still not like an incredible guitar player, but, um, I, I would say in my twenties, but I really started, um, kind of diving in head first with, with writing worship music really over the last couple of years. It was, um, you know, before, but I started writing worship songs probably, uh, probably, with, probably within the last four or five years. Um, but yeah, just it just really started taking off just within the last year and a half or so where I'm where I'm like, okay, I want to actually write and release. And and I would say my songs are they're not they're not your um they're not your uh standard CCM, I guess. Worship. Yeah. I guess I guess there's definitely some influences because I you know, I love Phil Wickham. I still love Phil Wickham and and a lot of these guys, but um yeah, they're they're not I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're necessarily congregational, right? I mean, right. I definitely want to write congregational um, at some point when it comes, but it's just music is one of those things that you, that you can't force, you know? You just kind of have to let it come the way it's coming. And, um, you know, so, so really, it's really in the last year and a half that I really started um, focusing on developing, developing my writing. And um, I'm, still, I'm still digging so deep, man. I'm still trying to learn. There's so much on trying to learn we just did a we just did a um uh a, a, a writer's workshop with gable you were on there with gable price yeah, and gable price and friends and i'm just trying to learn from these guys that that i think are just 10 times better than me um, <laughs> because i want to be better you know that's that's always something that i've, that I've wanted i want to be able to better articulate what's on my heart you know and i think i think music is is it's got to be one of the most complex forms of communication that we know you know and God created it, right? So yeah. So I just want to get better at it, you know. Yeah, I think it's it's so interesting too because, like you were saying, it's it you can't really force a a song, you know. And I think for a a long time, and I think we might have had some of this conversation before on the phone or something. But you know, I didn't write any Christian based music. I mean, I've I've been a Christian for a very long time at this point, but. I, I wasn't writing any music around that. And I suddenly had like this moment where I thought, am I being a bad steward of not writing about who is supposed to be the most important person in my life, which is the Lord. And so it, it kind of started, that kind of started me on that path of, of like, okay, so how do I articulate that, that, you know, in a way that, that translates to what I'm thinking. And that can be like a really tough thing. But then there are sometimes that you sit down, like there's a, there's a song called, uh, that I did called You Forever. And I wrote that song in five minutes. I like sat down and wrote it 
And then I was like, this is it. Like, I've got to record it before I forget. And then other times it's like months. So it's, it, you can't force it. It just like happens randomly. But yeah, totally. Now, totally. And now I, I, agree, I agree with what you said about, you know, if, if God, if God's supposed to be the most important thing, most important person in our lives and we're writing music, then we should, we should be writing music for God. We should be writing music uh, to further the kingdom, right? To to spread his love and awareness. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, and also just songs from our heart that are, you yeah. know, dedicated to him. Yeah, I think that's the other interesting thing too, is, is some people associate, and this is kind of why I, in a, a way, wanted to do these live stream conversations with, with, with people like you. Like, I think sometimes people associate all Christian music as, very similar or very the same but there's some really unique music out there that's talking about stuff in a way that that we aren't familiar with you know and and i think that you've done a really good job articulating some of that in your music where it's a concept that seems familiar but it's worded in a way that's like oh hey this is this is actually kind of a different way of phrasing that that makes sense and so you're you now are in a band you're with your friend hunter in a band and uh, that would be hopeful. Is the is the band name correct? With a little yeah. period right there, right? Yeah, Got a little dot, a little dot at the end. And uh, y'all, y'all, I mean everything you've sent me. You're just it sounds great, and it's great, amazing stuff that y'all are working on. But I was gonna see, are, do you want to play a song that you've got? <laughs> Yes, it's a weird I'll... introduction, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, t I'll give you a little, a, a quick little uh, backstory on Hopeful. So, awesome. Uh, hopeful, Hopeful just came to me when I was. Um, it was through a season where I was battling a lot of anxiety, and um, and I just, I just decided, you know what? Like, I'm gonna write music that that gives people hope, you know, and I'm gonna try really hard not to be cheesy with it, but. I just want to be honest and, and transparent. Yeah. And um, so it was actually, it was actually a, a season where I was actually kind of, I was really second guessing uh, myself and whether or not like I should be doing this at all. And um, I, uh, I, I really, I had just gone through like a, a moment where I was like, you know what, I think I'm just not going to do this. Cause you know, when you're writing and you're singing, you're, you're, you're in a really vulnerable place and you're putting yourself mm -hmm. out there and um you know, you're, you're exposing yourself to get critiqued and judged and, and, you know, people, and people aren't always that nice, <laughs> you know? Oh, really? And, no. <laughs> and, yeah. You, you wouldn't know, right? I have and, no uh, idea what you're talking about. But I, but I was thinking, I was like, but it's not, it's not really for, it's not really for people. I'm doing this for God, you know, and God's going to use, and he's going to touch the people that need to hear it. And some people that don't like it or don't appreciate it, well, maybe they weren't the ones that needed to hear it, you know? Right. And so I just, I just decided, you know what? Okay, I had this I had this epiphany one night, and I was really feeling down on myself, and um, and I just I just had this epiphany, and this lyric came to me, and it was God saying that that I still matter to Him, no matter what, no matter no matter how sometimes I can be crazy, sometimes I can be difficult. You know, my wife will tell you, um, <laughs> and uh, and I just felt God's I just felt God's whisper over my over my over my life, like, hey you still matter, even though you're flawed, even though you have all this, you know, baggage, you know, lay it yeah. down at my feet and just know that I'm Lord and that I'm with you and that I love you. And um, it was a really intense experience because um, when I wrote that song, like most of it just came to me. And, and I remember, I don't remember really the writing process. I just remember when I finished, like I just had this real spiritual moment with God and I literally like, you know, was brought to tears and and it was just like wow lord like you just spoke to me and then when i looked at the lyrics i was like man this is everything that i needed to hear right now and and then i felt god saying what's well, not just for you um that i want to i want to use your gift mm. to give other people hope um and so yeah so so that was really where hopeful started and um also during the pandemic um our church we kept we stayed open and, and there's a lot of other churches around here that were closed and so there's a lot of a lot of uh, worship musicians that were really looking for places to you know to to play and to serve and i met some amazing people through that um and one of them happened to be hunter jackson who came and played drums with me uh, but we became like we became friends like after the first time we got together we just like knew like oh we're gonna be friends 
and he nice. was writing and he's got his own stuff you should y'all should check him out hunter jackson um, it's good he's got his own stuff and so he invited me into his studio session and in that studio session like i really just like i was like all right i'm ready like this is i'm ready to do this and i i fell in love with it and i just thought it was so cool that he invited me into that studio session and so i pretty much came every time i went to the studio with him every time and um even though <laughs> I, I wasn't you know i I didn't really do much on the song. I helped him like write part of the bridge, but for the most part, I was just, I was just there as a guest. And um, from that relationship, we just, we said, Hey, why don't we start this band? And I had the idea to call it hopeful and it's hopeful with a period. And the period is because like, I am going to be hopeful. I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to hope and it's not up for discussion, like period. Ooh. Right. And so I love that. that's where, that's where hopeful with a period comes in. It's just hopeful. We're hopeful. And, um, and so yeah, we started writing and we wrote this song enough, and um, that's been that was a that was a blast. It was our first song, and now we're on to a much more intimate um, song, which I'm gonna share. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys. Um, if you want, you can check out. Uh, you can check us out at Hopeful. Um, it's just Hopeful with a period. You can check us out on Spotify or YouTube or wherever. And the song is called Enough. That one's out already. And if you could follow us, then you'll be. Um, you'll be able to, you'll get notified when this new song comes out. Um, and then you can also check out my, my individual page at Randy James. It's just Randy James. Um, and I've got two songs. Uh, I've got hopeful and, uh, the hopeful song enough and then, uh, still matter. Um, yeah. which is the first song I wrote and that's how I met you. It's, uh, that, it's how you met me. I see that song yeah. and every time it like pops up on a shuffle of some sort, I'm like, this is how I met Randy. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, with this this next song, I'll, I'll, I'm going to play for, for you guys. Um, just give you a little backstory. It, it, I think, I think it's, uh, and even I think Gable Price said this when we were talking to him. Um, a lot of people write music um, as they write the, the in their music, like for Christian music, they write about the struggle, but in past tense, you know. And so this song, um, this song is is it's present tense struggle, you know, mm. and it's, and it, it just, it's just being vulnerable and it's talking to God about like, Lord, like, remember those days when, when our relationship was so on fire, those days that I would wake up early in the morning just to seek your face. And I felt your presence and, um, and I just, I just felt something. And then, and then comes a season where you're in the desert and anybody who's been, who's been a believer and, and followed Jesus long enough knows that, that you're going to go through desert seasons. Yeah, And so this song is really, it's really a desert season song. And, um, but it's a desert season song with the heart and hope that I'm not going to give up and I'm going to run back and I'm going to, and I'm going to chase after the father. Um, so yeah, um, the, I will, uh, I'll play this song for you guys. And, um, awesome. and um, it's called Secret Quiet Place. Yeah. So it goes up. Desert 
left you. It's time to turn around. So to my knees I fall back down. And I come to seek your Yeah, yeah. Woo! Dude, so good. <laughs> I love that. That's, uh, I mean, I think you had sent me a demo of that maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I told you, I was like, this is, I love this lyrically and musically. It's just really interesting. And I, I really like the acoustic version I just heard too. So maybe, maybe an acoustic version in the future, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's actually, it's actually going to be really acoustic. Oh, is it? So, okay, so, sick, yeah. then that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I sent you like a really rough demo. Um, it's going to, I mean, it's going to have drums in it, but yeah, the drums, yeah. are, the drums are going to be really small. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be very acoustic driven, little, little hints of piano and, nice. um, and some cello and, you know, man, but yeah, it's the, the heart behind it is just to be real intimate and, yeah. um, you know, it's just an intimate, honest conversation with God. It's like, Lord, you know, I'm longing for the days when before the dawn I'll wake. Like the old times when I used to wake up, you know, before the sun would rise, I was I was there seeking you, Lord. And, um, you know, it's like it's remembering those times and, and saying, you know, I got to run back to that. Yeah, I got to run. I, I got to run back to that. When we fall off track, we have to run back. That run. What else? <laughs> hey, add it, you just add a tag, right? Just throw there. <laughs> what I love about that is it's actually like it's very reminiscent of of a lot of how the Psalms feel. You know, yeah. I think people they, you know, kind of like we talked about with with Gable, there there is this method of sometimes like I was really sad or I was going through a hard time, and then Jesus came along and now my life is perfect. And you see a lot of that in in a lot of Christian music. But what I love about songs like Secret Quiet Place is it feels a lot like when David was out in the wilderness writing psalms being like, hey, God, why am I being hunted? Why is Saul chasing me nonstop? And you see him questioning, like, when am I, like, are you ever going to turn your face back towards me? Like, it yeah. feels like you've turned your back on me. But then there's always this, like, turnaround in the psalms where you see David say, like, I know all of that's happening, but I also understand that you're completely faithful and that you haven't left my side. And yeah. so I love that that's reflective of, of what we see 
in scripture as well. So I, it's a beautiful song. I can't wait for it to, to hit. I really can't. Yeah, so I, I've got, I think yeah. the, the last little, last little comment on it was, um, you know, I, I think, I think it's really relatable that yeah. when we, when we're, we're, when we're in the desert that we feel, sometimes we feel abandoned, you know? And so that, you know, that's why, um, you know, when, when you're in the middle of that, it's like, sometimes you're like, God, where are you? Like, like, I feel like you're not even, you're not even here. Yeah. And so that's where the lyric came, you know, um, every day that passes by without you in my life feels like I'm stranded in the desert left to die. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, and when I wrote that, um, I was really feeling that, you know, and I felt yeah. like, I felt like the Lord wants to use that to meet somebody who's at that place and then be reminded, yeah. wait, the only one who truly loves our soul is Jesus. The only one who truly is the lover of our soul, the one who laid his own life down for us is Jesus. And yeah. so that, yeah, that's the heart behind the song, man. I'm excited to share it, it with you. It's, it's really, it, it is relatable completely. And I think that what's important too is, is seeing in those lyrics that God isn't afraid to hear when how we're feeling on things you know like right. i think sometimes people are like i can't pray that to god because like i don't want him to think this about me and the reality is like god is already with us in our thoughts and he's with us in these moments that we go through and you see that in david you see it in this song where it's like god i am feeling like you've abandoned me and that doesn't scare god away as much as it is it shows that we are placing our faith in our relationship where we understand, hey, I have an open line to communicate with the savior of humanity and the creator of the world, which yeah. is just mind boggling sometimes, but we do. We have that open line of communication and it's it's just it's phenomenal. But yeah. I love that song, dude. I really do you, and I'm excited for it. Um I have I have one last question for you. This yeah, is my fun Marcus. question I ask everyone. Nope. What is what is a piece of equipment or a plug in or a program that you are just wild about right now with music stuff? What you got? Oh, man. And this is what I like to call Jonathan getting his shopping cart too full on Amazon every time. <laughs> oh, man. I. It could be an I, instrument I, or anything. I already, I already went so, like, I went so crazy with buying <laughs> musical instruments and everything this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say that I would say the thing that I'm like most excited about right now is, um, and, and I still have, to, I'm still like learning is, um, I got a, a broadcaster junior, uh, it's a Gretsch. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's white with gold, with gold. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was going to get the Falcon, but I was like, but I actually like the look of the, of the broadcaster junior better. There you and go. So, and, and, you know, and obviously one of my good friends, has the broadcaster junior and i absolutely love the tone of that guitar um so i would say that that one right now and i i have still not broken it in like i've i've played with it at home but i haven't even i haven't played out with it yet i'm like i'm i'm like nervous to play out with it <laughs> <laughs> you gotta send so me I a just, picture of that just, one dude i, I haven't this, seen I it i take this trusty guy everywhere i go yeah this is my tailor so beautiful nice but anyway, nice but yeah man well thank you dude. so much jonathan no, thank you, man. I was I was so pumped when you were when you were obviously like, yes, let's do this. I mean, I sent the text and you were like, now let's do it. So I was I was pumped that you were ready for it. But yeah, uh, also just one more plug, like y'all go follow Randy. You can actually tap. It's like a little arrow, a drop down menu up at the top, and you can follow him and you can follow him and Hunter's band, hopeful. And you can go listen to them on Spotify. And Randy, I will get a link from you for like either a specific song or something. And we will do like a swipe up or a link on our story okay. for you guys as well. So, oh, dude, great. thanks for thanks for joining on here, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Thanks and, for having thanks, me. Yeah, man. And thanks everybody who's been watching. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next month, which is the month of Christmas. How weird is that, Randy? That's crazy. It's right around the corner, baby. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just odd. It. I, I can't either. But that's next episode will be in December. So we will see y'all then. So awesome. see you, Randy. Right. See y'all. God bless you, everybody. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, man.